Robinson waits. Here comes the pitch. And there goes a line drive to left field. Swan is after it. He leaps. It's over his head against the wall. Here comes Gilliam scoring. Brooklyn wins. Jackie Robinson is being pummeled by his teammates. Capturing the imagination of sports fans, sports broadcasting has been a part of American culture since the 1920s. There goes Davis. Oh, my gosh. Davis is going to run it all the way back. Auburn's going to win the football game. Baseball was the first sport covered on the radio, but not in the manner that you might think. Baseball teams were afraid of radio broadcasts keeping fans from the ballpark, and a war ensued between baseball and the media. Reporters were banned from reporting games directly live on the radio, but there were ways around the rules. Reporters used telephones and telegraphs to relay information to radio station crews who in turn added theatrics to the broadcast with simulated sounds of the crowd in a ball in play. During the 30s, even President Reagan got his start in show business simulating Chicago Cubs games at WHO 1040 AM Des Moines, Iowa. But sports broadcasting has changed since the days of simulated baseball broadcasts. The fear of de-incentivizing a fan's visit on game day turned into a cash cow for teams through selling broadcasting rights. The 1930s also brought television to sports broadcasting through Major League Baseball, although the popularity of TV broadcasts would not come into full swing until the 1950s. The great voices and personalities of Vin Scully, Red Barber, Ernie Harwell, Harry Carey and Jack Buck came about during this time. Yet sports broadcasting may never find anyone as charismatic as these broadcasters ever again. Although some charisma has been lost with the next sports broadcasting generation, many gains have been made. No longer are sports broadcasters limited to being white men who are grandfatherly figures. Sports broadcasting has diversified in this next chapter. Doris Burke, James Brown, Rod Allen, Jessica Mendoza, and the late great Stuart Scott have led the new generation of sports journalists. Sports broadcasting has come a long way from the first days of televised sporting events. Then he gets it back and scores, and they're really swinging it. We got a wild one on our hands. Kansas and Missouri. And brother, they are really slugging in there. Right next to me is saying it. You may hear him. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. But with a large diversity of new sports broadcast journalists, the sky is the limit for the evolution of sports broadcasting. I have. I think he's a little ahead of where they expected him to be in terms of his handle, his ability to manipulate pick and roll. Stand the way I feel.